here, so I was hacking dry ice onto an old Zalman cooler, basically to see how low I could drop my CPU temps. About five minutes after we stopped taping, deadlines are a pain. I ran my infrared thermometer across the bottom of the cooler and found out that there was a huge difference in temperature from one side to the other, almost 40 degrees. In any case, I started reading up on some of the latest CPU cooler reviews up on hardocp.com and noticed that in the words of the site's founder, Kyle Bennett, good air cooling is really hard to beat now. Look, it's crazy. I'm going to get Kyle up here. Kyle Bennett, hardocp.com. Dude, you've got $40 air coolers that are doing better than the, the, the water cooling system that came in the, the Blackbird case that I recycled for this setup. What's going on with air coolers, man? You know, we've been, we've been following air coolers now for about 12 years, and, and they, they have changed. They have advanced so much. They really, they, they, there's been an evolutionary step. There hadn't been anything revolutionary mm -hmm. in it besides the heat pipe about four years ago. But what you're seeing now are, are coolers on the market. There's, there's a ton of competition. They're easy to make now. And as, as long as you have good circulation in your case, which is this is the whole key to, to good air cooling, mm -hmm. is making sure you have good circulation in your case. If you're getting good ambient temperature air into your case to bring across those heat sinks, you can, you can get a $40 heat sink now, which is one of the, even be one of the huge tower ones that give you some really, really great results. So I noticed we're talking about like, you know, 40 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius for ambient temperatures in a, in a 25 degrees Celsius room. That's pretty good for an overclocked CPU. Yeah, the, the, the heat pipes that they're using on these, uh, on these new coolers pull the heat off the, off the cold plates so quickly. And you, you, now you've got 120 millimeter fans. They've got great airflow across them without being really loud. So as long as you're able to, again, to exhaust that hot air from the case, mm -hmm. and keep an ambient temperature in your case that's uh, relatively low, these air coolers have absolutely no problem pulling that kind of heat off the CPU. You, you mentioned, the, you said budget air cooling does not get better than the code, J, code gauge True Spirit. This is a $40 CPU cooler that's basically running with stuff that costs $60, $100. I mean, is there, is there any expensive heat sink at this point that's worth the money or air cooler well, yes yes there is now let's let's be specific here and okay. like the the lower price coolers you see are not the best in the market okay uh -huh. they are going to handle some some minimal overclocks and i say minimal they're going to handle some really good overclocks but they're not going to handle those ragged out to the edge four gigahertz overclocks um i built a system for a buddy last night using a brand new i7 930 that he picked up at micro center for 200 bucks we used a uh, 40 four dollar cooler from fries <laughs> it was a it was a titan cooler it was one of mm -hmm. the bigger tower coolers and we ran we were able to get a solid 3.5 gigahertz overclock at stock voltage on the core that's pretty good so now you can jump up when you when you generally talk talk jumping up in price um you mentioned you mentioned the co gauge is around forty dollars co gauge is actually a brand of thermal right okay and Thermalright's been in the business for years and years now, and they still make what is probably the the epitome of the of uh, the best overclockers uh, air cooler out there, which is the true the Thermalright uh, Ultra Extreme 120. Is water cooling dead? Except in, like at the super high end, I'm going to set new records, you know, overclocking mayhem. Well, you know, I'm sitting here telling you how great uh, air cooling is, and <laughs> it be, but none of my systems here are air cooled. First. <laughs> I still water cool all my systems, mm -hmm. and and one of the things, and and this this comes back to airflow and ambient temperatures in the case. The one great thing that water cooling still has going for it is the fact that it removes that heat from the case. So right. you're actually you're exhausting that outside of the chassis almost 100 percent of the time. So and then you can build a loop. You can put a chipset cooler. You can do a video card cooler. You can do your CPU cooler. Mm -hmm. so you can cool a lot of different. Uh, you can cool a lot of different components inside your case. And get all that heat outside of your case, so you're not so you're not hot boxing the rest of your components. Let's talk about setup for a second. I've I've been amazed in, in the last year. I've been spending a lot of time yanking heat sinks off of uh, coolers off of processors and putting them back on. It seems like the 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 thermal compound that comes with a with a cooler is almost invariably the worst stuff on the planet. I mean, I've 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 dropped 10 degrees on my core temps by going from the the little tiny tube that came in the box to some Arctic Silver, some of the other ones out there. What do you what do you what's your your favorite for for you know or or am I just did I just get the one with peanut butter or cheese in it instead of actual thermal compound you know thermal compounds have come along a long ways just like the air coolers have mm -hmm. 
honestly, a lot of the thermal compounds you get with the air coolers nowadays are very, very good. Uh, <laughs> so I'm just getting the unlucky boxes? <laughs> well, yeah. You know, if, if you go back and look, if you go back and look, we've done some, we've done a lot of testing on this in the last year. Mm -hmm. And, and there, there are absolutely some better thermal compounds on the market. And I believe we had a conversation about the, I forget the blue one that was set the other day. The one where you like light your processor on fire and it disseminates into a perfect pattern. And Exactly. <laughs> that, and, and so, you know, you've got where you've got from $10 installations to less than 25 and in, 25 cent installations mm -hmm. of stuff that's really, really good. And we, I think the, uh, the Shin Etsu E751, I looked that up at what SVC where you could buy it with free shipping. Yeah, and it was like two dollars a gram or three dollars a gram. Um, so, and, and that's one of the best available. So, mm -hmm. if you shop around, you know, you can you can drop a lot of money on thermal interface material. But, <laughs> but the bottom line is, it's probably not a really good idea to do so unless you just got ten, twenty bucks to give away to somebody else. I know you're running out of time. You got stuff to do this afternoon. What What are your favorite CPUs right now for overclocking, Kyle? I am still very much fan of the i7, uh, the Core i7 750. Mm -hmm on the, the LGA 1156, and if you're going to be building an X58 system on 1366 uh, socket, the i7-930 right now is a scorcher. Yeah, that's a, I'm like, my 920, I can't believe how high I'm overclocking it at this point. It makes me happy. It's I've still got a my system, and my, my i20's been running for a long time now at 1.1 vCore at 3.6 gigahertz and we load it up all the time doing encodes with it so they're super stable as long as you got decent cooling they are rock solid is what it comes down to if you cool them right and you can still do you can you can you can pull 3.4 3.5 gigahertz uh overclocks with those processors with air cooling mm -hmm. as long as you keep your airflow in your case working well what's coming up on hardocp.com what's got you guys excited right now oh well you know we're we're watching to see, you know, the, the GTX 480 and 470s launched here recently. Not to, uh, to a lot of fanfare, but there's been a lot of talk about those. And when you start talking about heat and power, you can certainly talk about uh, NVIDIA's video cards. <laughs> so, so we're starting to see a lot of those get into readers' hands, or they're, they're starting to trickle out there, and we're starting to get feedback. Um, you know, on that side, video cards are always exciting. So we've, we've seen NVIDIA produce the, uh, the fastest GPU that's out there, and we've seen AMD produce probably... The most efficient and uh, best valued GPU out there. So it's always good to watch what the guys have to say about that now that they're getting product back in their own hands. Kyle Bennett, founder, chief maven over at hardocp.com. You look for hardware reviews, take some time, spend it on that website. You will enjoy it.